happen. Hey, hey, Christian. Thanks. Uh, thanks for this. Welcome to Detroit. Hey, uh, I mean, you were in Arizona a long time. I obviously, what made the Wings such a good fit for you here today, signing with them? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I was in Arizona for my whole career, so um, you know, definitely a, a big you know change of scenery for me. But um, you know, yesterday it was pretty pretty stressful day. Obviously, had a lot of a lot of conversations with a lot of teams, but. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I, I actually talked to Jay Verde, who I have uh, a personal relationship with just from his time in Arizona. Um, he reached out and we, we spoke for, you know, a good 10, 20 minutes. And um, I don't know, something about that phone call really, really just resonated with me. And it kind of just felt felt like the right pick. I mean, I, I wish I could tell you there was there was a specific answer to, to why I chose it. But, you know, after speaking to Jay and um, talking to, to Steve, I think, um, you know, I, I just really I was really motivated and, and, and it felt right. And um, I feel like I could, I could help this team win. So, um, I mean, it, it really just came down to, to the simple, the simple facts of that. I mean, I, you've been there so long. I mean, we hear all the stories, obviously. How big of a drag is it mentally when you don't know where you're going to be playing year to year? Could be playing in Houston or Saskatchewan or Kansas city or whatever. I mean, is it tough? I mean, yeah, I mean, it just, it's not normal. I know that's, that's for certain. Um, you know, it's, it's just another, you know, a pretty big distraction that obviously takes up a, a lot of conversations and uh, obviously gets a lot of, a lot of media attention, but um, you know, as players, I honestly, truthfully, once you're there and you're, you're playing hockey, it's really not that big of an issue, but uh, I mean, I'd be lying to you if, it, if I said it wasn't annoying hearing it every, you know, every damn week and, and, um, you know, unfortunately it's, a, it's just the situation they're in right now. And, um, you know, I, I will say, you know, if that, if that market gets a, a rank in Scottsdale, it's going to be a home run. I know I could say that right now from being there for seven years. Um, that's, that's all they're missing. They have, they have the fan base, they have everything. Um, they just need it. They need a rink and they need it bad. And, um, I think that will, that will settle a lot of the, uh, the questions and, and, uh, and everything you hear about the coyotes, but, um, that, I mean, definitely that's, that's something, uh, that I haven't had, uh, you know, for seven years, I, I really haven't had a, a home ice advantage. I haven't really, you know, scored a goal and, and, and you know, had, you know, 15, 20, 20,000 people, you know, cheering for you and, and rooting on your side. That's, that's something to, as crazy as it is, you know, being being 400 games in the NHL, it's 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 pretty fun to to kind of have that the that kind of your first your first crack at it. That seems kind of tough. I mean, <laughs> is that? I mean, yeah. I mean, is that kind of disappointing in a way? Or yeah, I mean, it's it's. I don't know about disappointing. I mean, it's just. I mean, uh, listen. I, I know as players, as much as we'd like to control, we we play for the coyotes and that's the situation that, that, that we were given. I mean, if we had any control over it, you know, it's probably a different story and we probably have different opinions, but um, it's no different. You know, if your employer, you know, change offices and you're, you're working somewhere else, mm -hmm. you, you don't really have a say in it. So, um, but I mean, I can tell you right now, I, I don't know one athlete that, that doesn't, you know, wouldn't love playing in front of, you know, thousands and thousands of their home hometown fans. And, um, you know what a what a what a cool place to do that. And, you know, with a with a franchise like Detroit and and the fan base that they have, I think that's um, you know what a what a 180 um, going from from Arizona to there. The yeah, last one. I mean, do you like playing at that junior rink? I mean, call it a junior rink, but you know, this yeah, like, I mean, it was kind of different. I mean, yeah, it was different. I mean, listen, it, it, it's I could honestly say when when you're on the ice and you're playing, it, it's you don't really notice the difference. I mean, yeah, you look around and it's not, you know, it's, it's not 20,000 seats, but, um, when you're in the game and you're playing, it's looks no different than any other ice sheet. So, um, I know that's probably a big, you know, something that doesn't get brought up a lot as players. You really don't notice it when you're playing, um, you know, should there be a, a 5,000 seat in NHL arena for multiple years? Probably not. That's not the NHL. That's not the right way, but um, I mean, it was unique and I, I tell, I tell all my friends, I know, even even you guys, like, I don't know if you guys have been there, but uh, you'll never get to see NHL hockey in a 5,000 seat arena again. And you'd be, you'd be pretty, pretty stupid not to, not to go at least check out one game. Uh, it's, uh, it's an experience that 
you'll never see again. You'll never get to see NHL hockey that close. There isn't a bad seat. So you say all those things for the fans, it's fun. But um, in the end, I know every player wants to play in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people, and especially in their home city. I appreciate your time. Thanks for this, Christian. Yep. And Sarkhan. Yeah, hi, Christian. Uh, can you give us a bit of a breakdown of your game, uh, your style of play, and what you hope to bring uh, to Detroit? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously I'm a, I'm a pretty big body, so I think, you know, I like to use the word, you know, being a power forward, but, um, you know, with that, I, I take a lot of, a lot of pride in, in being a 200-foot player. I know it's very cliche to say and, and an easy answer, but, um, you know, I value playing, playing the D side of the puck. I think, you know, over my years in Arizona, I've, I've really, uh, you know, kind of solidified a role as, you know, playing a lot of almost for years and last three or four years, I, I was taking every D zone draw against the other team's top line. I was PK and, you know, usually first one or two, three, four guys out the front door for, for the PK. So, um, I'd like to say, I, I, I do a lot of those, those dirty things that, you know, they're not goals and assists, but, um, you know, I have the boys and, and, and the, the team, they, everyone knows that's how you, you gotta have, you gotta, that's how you win hockey games in, in certain scenarios. So, um, I, I would say simple 200 foot power forward. Um, I, I think this year, uh, I mean, I was pretty limited, you know, in my times in Arizona playing, you know, in, in smaller roles or defensive roles, which is, like I said, uh, right up my alley. And I thought, I, I think I do a really good job, um, with that and, and it's very valuable, but, um, I, I know I have I have potential to score you know a lot of goals in this league. I mean, obviously, if you're not playing power player top six minutes, you're not gonna you're not getting thirty goals. But um, I think I'm more confident to to be around the fifteen goal mark almost every year. And um, and with that being said, you know, be really be really relied on defensively, play against you know some some hard minutes, some some greasy minutes, and and obviously the PK as well. I think I've taken a, a tremendous stride in in that and. Um, I love the type of stuff. I love grinding it out there with the boys. It's, it's, uh, that's what, that's what I love. Thanks, Christian. Bob Duff. Hey, Christian, you, you played a couple of years in the national team program in this area. You played here in Windsor in junior when Bob Bugner was involved in ownership of the team. How much did that familiarity play a role in your decision? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a, it was a, you know, a changing factor, but it definitely, it, it played some type of, you know, obviously me being in Arizona for, for my whole career, um, you know, change is always scary, right? You ask anybody, it's, it's different. It's, it's uh, different faces, different coaching staff. I think just having Boogie and, and even having Jay Verde uh, just to, just to have that initial phone call, um, you know, you ask any player, it, it's a little nerve wracking during that time, having all those phone calls, speaking to so many different, you know, GMs or, or coaches or whatever it is, just to be able to, to kind of just, you know, ask the questions that I wanted to ask and, and ask truthfully. And I, I obviously have the, the personal relationship with both of them to, to where I know that they're, they're not going to, you know, cookie cut it for me. They're going to tell me exactly what they're looking for and why, why they wanted me and, and why they thought I would be a good fit. And, um, you know, after, you know, kind of weighing all the teams and all the options I've, like I said earlier, it's something just just resonated with me, and it honestly just it just feels it feels right here. And um, I, I obviously know I know uh, I know Lark's pretty well just through through the USA program. Um, I know obviously Gossa Spare shined here as well, who's a really close friend of mine. Uh, I know the Cop family well. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a few connections as well that I obviously know I'm familiar with with Detroit, and I know how how well ran of an organization it is from from top down. You know, speaking of Gus, just be here. Give us a scouting report on him, what he brings to the ice. Yeah, I mean, I tell you right now, what, what you know, he's had an interesting, you know, last probably two and a half years or so coming from Flyers to us. I think he's, you know, the player he was with us that last year, and and obviously going to Carolina and in playoffs. I mean, I think it kind of speaks for itself. I mean, I think he's a very, very high talented D-man. Um, he he thinks the game really well. I think that's a big part where where guys don't give him enough credit. Yeah, he's skilled and, he, and he'll make those high, you know, high danger plays and he, and he gets, you know, nine out of 10 times he's getting the puck through, but um, his, his IQ and how to read the plays, not the biggest guys, not the fastest, but defensively, he knows, he thinks the game at such a top level that, you know, he hands those top, that top line every night. He knows their style. He knows what they're going to do. Um, 
I think he, he he's a tremendous, tremendous player. And I think he's, you know, I know he had those couple of rough years there with, with Philly. And I think he got injured there pretty good. So um, I think he's back to, to being the Shane Gosses bear that he was for, you know, I'd call him 90% of his career. And, and that's a damn good player in my opinion. And um, I think he's going to provide a lot of, a lot of really good things for, for Detroit. Before I let you, I got to ask about the hat. Is it just coincidence? Or are you a big Caddyshack fan? Uh, I, I, you know, I enjoy the, I enjoy Caddyshack. I'm a big golfer. So uh, I got a, I got a bunch of, you'll be seeing a bunch of golf, golf hats coming in, uh, coming in the doors here soon. Thanks. Yep. Jonathan Mills. Hey, Christian, over the years in your time with Arizona, you, a lot of your teammates have described you as like an energy guy. Is that something that just comes naturally? And how, how do you kind of keep that going? Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, uh, I mean, obviously we're on a zoom call, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've, uh, it's just who I am. I, I love, I'm a very outgoing personality. Um, I love chatting with, with whoever, um, you know, to be honest, I think that we we're beyond blessed to, to play this game and play in this league and, and to do it for a living is, is incredible. And I think, you know, every day that, that we're showing up to that ring should, you know, should be a pretty damn good day, you know, regardless of the situation. So I, I love having fun. You always see me with a smile on my face. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's always a good day, obviously, you know, when you wake up, uh, I think it, I think of it that way. So um, I love, I love being around the boys. I think that's, you know, obviously hockey itself. I think the team aspect is, is different to any other sport. And um, I, you know, obviously even in Arizona, I mean, I, I had, you know, maybe three or four guys that stuck with me through the, through the seven years there. But I mean, we had a rotating door about 14 or 15 new guys that, that came in there every year. And I think, um, between myself and a couple other players, we, we did a really good job of just um, being welcoming, being being fun and keeping it light. I think that's, you have to do that. And, um, you know, obviously I, I, you know, haven't, don't know too many of the boys on Detroit, but can't wait to meet them. And, and uh, you know, just going to be myself. I'm not trying to, trying to be funny or doing anything. I, I love, uh, I love just, you know, showing up and working with the boys and it's so, it's so damn fun. I mean, you're going out there battling with them and getting two points. It's, it's, that's why we play hockey. Appreciate it. Welcome to Detroit. Thank you. Last question, Art Regner. Hi, Christian. Um, you know, you've mentioned Jay and Bob a little bit here. And during this whole, and I'm going to call it a recruiting process that you just went through, uh, I know that other teams, maybe they're telling you everything you want to hear. You're great. We love you. We want you to be here. Uh, you, know, you you fit in. You're, you, you know, you're, a, for lack of a better term, you know, you're a wild. You're a wild player. You know, th that's what we want. Was this more of an honest and intimate conversation you had with these guys? Because you do have a, a personal relationship where, you know, they said, you're a great player. This is what we're trying to accomplish. This is maybe something you need to work on. I mean, was it more of a, I guess, more real than maybe what you went through with other teams? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I mean, to, to a certain point, I'm not going to, you know, lie to you and say that they, you know, I didn't ask the same questions to them that I did to every other team. Um I think it was just the, the trust factor between myself and, and those two, two coaches. I mean, um, I just am comfortable enough to know that they, they wouldn't say something that's not true or try to do, you know, try to blow smoke up your ass just to, just to get you to sign there. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's October 30th and you're, you're sitting on the bench, you're playing four minutes. It's um, it, once again, it, there's no guarantees in anything. And, and I'm going to come in to, to Detroit and, and work my ass off and, and earn everything that I have to, to earn, but um, just knowing the trust that those guys have with, with myself and what I have with them, um, I know that they're being truthful. I know that I could trust them. And, and to be honest, I know that, you know, to work with them, I mean, obviously there's going to be new adjustments. There's going to be a new system, new PK, new forecheck, whatever it is. Um, how great is it that I get to, you know, learn that from two guys that I could, you know, call. I, I mean, I could call both of those guys right now and, and start asking questions or tell them to send me tape or do whatever they're they're You know, I think that's what I think you have to have those relationships as, as players with coaches. I think it's the new the new NHL. You got to be you got to be open. You got to be a personable guy. And um, I think it only makes you as a player want to work harder and, and perform better for for those guys, because, you know, in the end, we're, we're all doing this together and we're judged off of off of wins and losses. So, um you know, it definitely played a factor, like I said, but, it's, you know, it wasn't the craziest thing. I, I have, you know, a lot of ex-coaches that, that are playing or, you know, coaching other teams. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of personal connections throughout the NHL, but um, 
definitely having those two just to, to kind of, you know, trust, like I said, but, um, something I'm telling you, just, there's a, there's a feeling that just felt right. Something about Detroit, you know, I'm from the Midwest. I don't know, whatever it is, you know, knowing Larks, knowing cop, um, it, it just felt right. So, I mean, uh, honestly, I didn't really dwell on it too, too long after, after I had the call with, with those two and, and Steve, I think, um, you know, it was pretty simple for me that this is where, where I want to be and which is where I want to, I want to work. Did you, uh, did, did Larks or cop or anybody that, you know, on the team, did they reach out to you or did you reach out to them before you made your decision? Uh, not before the decision there. The, uh, I obviously, this is my first time going through, you know, kind of a free agency. So, uh, I didn't know how quickly things moved. Um, my goodness, they it is it is minutes on minutes on minutes you have basically to to respond or talk to your parents or talk to your agent. I mean, it, it's happening quick. So I didn't have the time to to reach out to to Larks or any of them to bounce questions off of. I, I don't think there was too much insight that you need when it comes to making that decision. It's not like you know they're going to tell you one thing that's going to sway you one way or another. I think it's pretty. The league's pretty pretty you know cookie cut you know, almost every team doing some similar type of, uh, of system or power player PK, whatever it is. Um, so, but I, I, right after, uh, it all happened, I got texts from, from both those guys, got a text from, from Fabry, got a text from a couple guys. So, um, uh, you know, it's nice. It's, 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 it's a cool feeling just to have, you know, you can already tell that that's a, it's a close, close knit team and, uh, you know, good leadership. And, and I think that plays a huge factor into to on ice success and being, you know, a close team. I think that's awesome. When uh, Steve said at his end of the year press conference that he wanted to make the Red Wings bigger, more physical, tougher to play against, a heavier team, you obviously, as you said, you're you know you're over six feet, six two, you're a strapping lad here. I mean, I mean, is that kind of music to your ears? I mean, that that's the Red Wings style or what they're evolving into is the you know the Christian Fisher style. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I mean, right when kind of that was obviously the conversations that we kind of had too, in, in the last couple of days was this is what they this is what they need, this is what they want, and and it almost just you know everything they said, I was like, oh that that's exactly what the type of game I play and what I want to play. Um, I think that's awesome, honestly. To to be honest, to to come to you know such a you know an original six team. I'm from Chicago, so you could already tell them you know I know how these. You know, Chicago, Detroit, I've been been to all of those games. I know how how great it is and, and how cool the fan bases are and how much they care. So, I mean, yeah, that's music to my ears to, to be able to, to go, you know, behind 10, 20,000 people that, you know, love love the Red Wings and go out there and work your ass off for them and, and you know, play heavy, play hard. Um, you know, if, if it's against the other team's top line, like uh, you're not too worried about the goals, right? You, you got Lark and you got these guys out there that the, that's what you got Peron. These are the guys that that are paid to, to go do that. And listen, there's, there's gotta be six other guys, three other guys that have to go out there and play against and shut down the other team's top line. So uh, the statistics don't lie. You, you keep a lot of those guys off the scorecard and, and you have a pretty good shot to, to win the game. So um, that's honestly, I've, I've, I've done it for quite a few years and um, I, I love, like I said, I love, there's a, there's a game within the game and I love, uh, I love, you know, that type of challenge. It's, it's fun. And, uh, it's not, it's not glorious and you're not going to, you know, I'm not going to be on the, the billboards, but, um, I know the boys appreciate it. I know that's, that's how you win. You got to have the, that type of character and, and, and leadership and, and, you know, type of type of players to, to, to win games. Well, remember the grind line is legendary and, uh, you know, it's, it certainly sounds like, uh, you know, that could actually happen here in Detroit. Uh, uh, yep. You, you know, really, I mean, what, what you just said, I'm sure there's a lot of people and a lot of Red Wing fans saying, wow, that he could have been a grind linder. Uh, with that yeah. said, though, I, I want to ask you, because of your background with the development program and then playing for the Spitfires, do you have a bit of an idea of what it will be like to be a Red Wing to play in this environment? Uh, I think, yeah, a, a better sense than I'd say, you know, than another player just coming in blindly. I've obviously, you know, during my time at the program, even and in Windsor, I came to, to plenty, you know, Detroit games. Um, like I said, just even being from Chicago, I, I went to almost every game, Blackhawk and, and Detroit game. Um, you, you just, you know how much the people care. And I think that's the, what a, like I said earlier, what a change that, I mean, no, there's no disrespect to Arizona, but just the facts are that, you know, you look at the two fan bases, it's a, it's night and day and, and how cool is it to, 
to to go out every single you know for 41 games and play in front of those those fans i i as an athlete that's all you want to do right you want to compete and to have a home team and a home crowd advantage and and get them behind you i mean that's that's music to anybody's ears. That's, that's what keeps you, you know, coming back, make you, makes you want to work harder. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And what a, you know, like I said, I'm, you know, pretty, pretty well into my career here. And, uh, you know, kind of the first time I get to have that, you know, support, you know, from the, from the home base. And, and that's pretty damn cool in my opinion. You know, I know you're a hard and professional hockey player now. And, uh, but I'm kind of curious being from Chicago, uh, when they won the lottery, did the inner child Blackhawk fan in you at least smile? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, obviously um, losing, you know, when they lost Taze Tay and Kane, obviously that's, you know, they ran that franchise for, for years and years. I mean, to be honest, I mean, yeah, I mean, I when I first started, I was going to Blackhawk games when, when Taze and Kane came in the league. And, you know, obviously you get those, you get that high of a draft pick, you look around the league, it's, it's you know some t majority of the time it, it changes your franchise and you get a couple of them i mean yeah it, it's going to change a lot of things so um i mean shit i remember going part of my language uh, i remember going to um uh the united center in 06 07 08 i mean there was four or five thousand people in there i mean i'm not kidding you it was crazy and then you draft two players like that and next thing you know, years later you're you're sold out twenty thousand every night and the last 10 years in a row. So um, I think it speaks volumes to, to how important that pick was, especially in this past draft with, with Bedard. So, um, you know, that's obviously going to be great for them. And, um, you know, just being from Chicago, that's, you know, that's good for the city. I think that the, that's uh, you always want, you know, you always hope, you know, being from there, it's, it's that the hockey six, uh, you, they keep having success and they move forward. And um, obviously they're, le they're losing those two big, uh, uh, two big guns. So um, you hope that, that, uh, that kind of sparks the city and, and could keep them afloat, but um, just not when they play Detroit. Right. Well, I, I think Red Wing fans are looking forward to when you uh, get to meet Bedard out on the ice for the first time. So that <laughs> it, it, it should be impactful. I would assume. Yep. Yeah, that's what, you know, you might be right. All right. Thank you. Best of luck. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. All right. Those were all the questions we had. Christian, thanks for the time today. And thanks everyone for joining us.